Welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast, where it's all about fixing your relationship without your man's conscious efforts that you feel desired, taken care of, and special, even if your relationship feels completely hopeless. I'm Laura Doyle, and today I'm sharing three ways to get more love and appreciation. My guest, Jody didn't have any hope that there would ever be intimacy in her marriage because it had vanished both emotionally and physically. But today, she not only has a warm, affectionate marriage, her kids are benefiting from having parents who obviously love each other. Next, I'll be giving out the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award, which is all about keeping secrets in a relationship. All that's coming up. But first, let's talk about three ways to get more love and appreciation. When your husband's on the couch watching TV or he's staring at his phone while you're doing the zillionth load of laundry, shuffling your kids around for the fifth time that day in carpool or putting in long work hours, it can rub you the wrong way, especially if he doesn't even seem to know how clean underwear magically appear in his drawer. It would go a long way to know that he sees how hard you work and he values it and appreciates it. But it appears he has no idea. He's not even aware of all it takes to keep your household running smoothly, which makes you feel lonely and taken for granted. You could tell him, but what would that accomplish? He'd only nod and listen as long as he thought he had to before he could get back to the TV or the phone. And then you'd feel even lonelier and less appreciated. At least that's how it went around here back in the bad old days. Fortunately, there's a much better way to get some recognition from your husband, which all humans need. Here are three ways to get more appreciation for all you do. Number one, create a culture of gratitude. Before I learned the six intimacy skills, I was pretty stingy with appreciating my husband. I was afraid that if I thanked him for what he was doing, he would think he was doing enough And I didn't think he was. I didn't want to send the wrong message. I was also worried that if I thanked him for taking out the trash, he would think it was optional and he would stop doing it. And then I'd have to add that to my already too long to-do list. So I withheld gratitude. I told myself he already knew that I appreciated him anyway. Of course, he worked hard and did a lot of things to lighten my load. But I was busy focusing on what he wasn't doing that I thought he should be doing. So I didn't see why I should be grateful. I now know I can't be grateful and resentful at the same time. Choosing gratitude meant I had to give up my resentment, which somehow felt as hard as parting with a precious family heirloom because I was just so used to having it. It wasn't until I made a point to find at least three things a day to appreciate about him that I realized I've been completely wrong about everything. First, I learned that my husband didn't know I appreciated him until I started telling him. I know that sounds obvious when I say it like that, but I couldn't believe how fast I got a better response when I said I was so happy the trash was emptied or that the kitchen looked so much tidier after he cleaned it or how much I liked the way the yard looked after he trimmed the the bushes. Once I expressed my appreciation, he actually started looking for ways to delight me further by putting gas in the car, bringing me a cup of tea, or fixing the broken sprinkler. One husband described this happening at their house also after his wife had been so grateful to him for fixing a broken cabinet. He said to himself, what else can I break around here so I can fix that too? Seeing my husband put all that effort into making my day, it sure made me feel like he valued me after all. But there was more. The more I appreciated my husband for everyday tasks, the more he started to respond in kind. He was appreciating me for making dinner, for putting away laundry. The result was that we now have a culture of gratitude in our home where we're just always thanking each other all the time. Talk about feeling valued. I'm guessing your husband works hard and does a lot too. He may also be longing for some acknowledgement like all humans do. Saying things like, I appreciate you working so hard to support the family, or thanks for always taking care of the cars, or you're such a great dad. That can go a long way toward creating a culture of gratitude where you both feel appreciated. If you find yourself feeling resistance to giving appreciation to get appreciation, I totally get it. I felt the same way. But ultimately, I decided that I wanted to be a grateful wife, not a bitter, resentful one. So it was really about me. And as a fringe benefit, I got more recognition too. Win-win. 
Number two, find your I can't. Another block that stood between me and feeling appreciated was this weird habit that I had of giving myself responsibilities that no one said I had to do and that I didn't want to do, but I made myself do anyway. I'd volunteer for all kinds of chores and favors and then be stressed out and exhausted afterward. And then the world looked wrong because I was so depleted. And my husband, who just happened to be there because he lives here, he seemed especially intolerable. There was no amount of appreciation that could fill my tank in those moments. And I was a depleted wreck a lot in the bad old days. And I was operating from a, a cavernous deficit. So no bouquets or other sweet gestures were going to fill that hole. So these days, I'm slow to volunteer. I'm quick to leave dishes in the sink for however long. And I rarely get into that painful state of self-betrayal. If someone asks me to do a task that's more than I can handle, I, I use these magical words to decline. I can't. I can't. That phrase has saved me so much grief and so many hostility hangovers that I'm very fond of it now. I don't overdraw my energy as best as I can, you know, I, and then I don't turn into a fire breathing dragon. It's just that simple. I'm not perfect. One time my husband needed a ride to the airport very early on a busy work day, and I forgot to say I can't. I wanted to just be helpful. Instead, I got overtired and grumpy, and it was not pretty. I shrilly asked him why he had to go so early and pointed out that he wasn't considerate of my schedule at all. And then I glared at him and I fumed in stony silence while he nervously waited for the storm to pass. And I'm sure he wished that I had said, I can't also. Using that phrase has meant that I can feel my husband's appreciation and delight instead of angrily wondering why I have to be the kitchen elf while he gets to have a good time. So if you haven't tried saying I can't yet, I highly recommend it. You might want to experiment with that one. Number three, look for evidence that your husband appreciates you. Another thing I, I did that doesn't work very well, that I don't recommend, is gather evidence that my husband didn't appreciate me because he wasn't showing appreciation the way I thought he should be by telling me so and offering to take on more responsibility. I don't recommend that. Uh, what I focus on increases it always increases. So if I focus on how he's not giving me the appreciation that I want, I'm never going to get it. If, however, I decide to focus on whatever small things he is doing to show his gratitude, even if it's not quite what I had in mind, I immediately feel more seen and recognized. And I like feeling that way. Therefore, I suggest getting out your magnifying glass and searching for all the evidence you can that he appreciates you and that he loves you. Maybe he didn't tell you directly that he appreciates you, but he did tell his brother on the phone that you're working hard. So that shows he notices. Or it could be something more subtle, like maybe you just get a knowing smile or, or a hug, just a simple hug, or maybe you get a momentary back rub. When I'm keenly focused on how he's appreciating me, even if it's just him saying thanks, when I tell him where the remote control is, I start to feel more appreciated. You can do the same thing. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at GetCherished.com. Go to GetCherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. My guest Jody didn't have any hope that there would ever be intimacy in her marriage because it had vanished, both emotionally and physically. But today, she not only has a warm, affectionate marriage, her kids are benefiting from having parents who obviously love each other. Jody, welcome to the Empowered Wife Podcast. Thanks for being on with us today. Thank you so much for having me. So take us back to the beginning and tell us what things were like in your marriage at its lowest point. What was happening? Uh, well, at our lowest point, uh, we were discussing divorce. Definitely, um, it was more me that would bring it up because I just, yeah, we were two people living in the same house. Uh, we didn't uh, communicate. We didn't. We our sex life was pretty much non-existent. 
we we didn't fight too much, but the kids could see uh, we we have three kids. Um, we they could see that we were in a loveless marriage, um, and it was definitely not something I wanted my kids to grow up around. Um, having me having um, my parents separated when I was older, uh, when I was a kid, um, well, I think I was thirteen or fourteen. Yeah, so that was something I didn't really want my kids to go through. And so I wanted them to see what a loving relationship looked like, even though I didn't really know what that looked like, but uh, I knew it wasn't healthy for them. Um, so, yeah, my husband and I, we, we were just, yeah, we would avoid each other as much as we could, um, only talking about the kids sort of when we had to. And, and yeah, that, that pretty much went on for almost 10 years. Like we would, um, each time, like I, I think I, we talked about divorce probably every other year so maybe at least five times uh, where it got really serious and we would go okay so last ditch so we'll go to counseling and that would bring us back together for a couple of months and then everything would be pushed under the carpet and that would be okay and then yeah uh slowly things would just get back to where they were and i and, and we would, so we're going around in circles and i was just like i need to get off this merry-go-round and t- for me that was looking like separating and I but I didn't you know I wanted to make sure that I was making the right decision because uh as much as I didn't really I wasn't I'd say in love with my husband I loved him he was I could see that he was a good guy and the reason I had for not being with him didn't seem that it was viable like you know uh, you know he didn't do the dishes or he didn't help me around the house <laughs> So when you tell people that's why you want a divorce, it, it doesn't sound that great. And it's like, okay, there's something we can fix this. But yeah, I've been trying for over ten years, so and nothing was. And just the yeah, the communication and the intimacy was, I guess, the big, the big bigger problems of of not having that relationship that we wanted. How did you know that the kids were suffering with this? Um, just um, there wasn't any laughter around our house they were just not having as much fun um my they were teenagers starting to become teenagers last time for their yeah 13 my oldest was 13 we mentioned divorce for the last time and uh so she was starting to act out a bit wanting to she was skipping school and yeah just uh behaving sort of how I was behaving in in that yeah, not loving. Uh, we we were starting to lose connection. I was starting to lose connection with her. Just, yeah, not as happy as they used to be. Yeah, it's interesting. She was she was the same age that you were when your mm. parents separated, and it sounds like that was pretty heart wrenching for you. I was seventeen when my parents split up. I was a little older than you, but it was still pretty devastating. So yeah, yeah, it, I definitely it affected all areas of my life, and and. Um, you know, you can see, I see my old, my parents' relationship playing out in my marriage and married my dad, you know, the non-communicative type and uh, having exactly the same problems that my parents did. Yeah. Yeah. It's not fun, especially, uh, you didn't have a good role model. So mm-hmm. you didn't, never really were taught how to have a great relationship. It's really frustrating to find yourself in that same boat and not know exactly how to get out of it so and and you're talking about uh, some of the you know some of the conflict was over him not helping and things like that it didn't seem like a valid enough reason but those kinds of things can really wear you down when you're feeling alone I think with all the housework and when you have three kids there's a lot there's just a lot of work Mm -hmm. all around so um so it's interesting you say like it didn't feel like a good enough reason to split. Like how, how did you find your way back from that? Like how did you talk yourself down from like, well, just him not helping. That's not good enough. Uh, yeah. I guess um, well, uh, back in the old days, I guess we'll call it the old days <laughs> before your, your skills, uh, when we would go to counseling. So we would, I guess the, the counselor would, yeah, we'd like, okay, so what can we do to, help Jody out around the house and, and he would hear it from somebody else that oh she needs some help around the house so uh, I wasn't so and that was I guess more when the kids were younger was the dishes um when they were older that they would help out more but 
when I look back as well, I I, I see the cry for um, help around the house is more like um, I wanted him to be more present around the house. Like, you know, he would come home after work, but he wasn't really here. He was still somewhere else. So, um, yeah, so more just, yeah, just for him to come home, I guess, and that sort of thing. Yeah, and so um, so it was almost so hard to describe the pain point, it sounds like, because he was physically at home, but not very present. And then all the things that go missing, right? You didn't feel desired or taken care of or special or no, all the things that we all want to have in our marriage. Yeah, no, there was none of that. No. Yeah. Yeah, we were just two roommates, basically. Yeah. So, so then what happened? Uh, yeah, so yeah, um, after the fifth time of separating, oh, we were, when we're coming back from the mood country, um, he's Canadian, so we're, we're moving back to Australia and, and things were good. Like when we change things, like change the scenery tends to, we, we go for a little bit longer and like, cause it, I'm not focusing on me and not focusing on the, the bad stuff, uh, the things that wasn't happening. So, and then I found your Facebook group. Uh, it popped up on my feed, and I just yep. So I added that, and then the the things that come through, maybe in the emails and everything that I read about you resonated definitely with what was going on in my life. And I was like, yeah, I joined the program, and and I haven't looked back since. <laughs> And you didn't just join, you say I joined the program and we have several programs. So this is extraordinary about you, Jody. You didn't just join a program to get coached for your own marriage. You joined coach training right off the bat, right? Yeah, yeah I must have missed the link for coaching, but I, I <laughs> the coach training and I said, sign me up. Like um, I had done a, a counseling course before and, and definitely I knew ending world divorce was definitely something I wanted to work towards but I had to figure out how to save my own marriage first and and this sounded like a great place to do it and I could save my marriage and learn coach training at the same time so yeah it just spoke to you it sounds like definitely so what did you first start doing differently than what you had done before um my first skill I had two. Gratitude was one that really changed the focus of what I was focusing on. I was focusing on all the bad stuff when there was a ton of good stuff that I was that was there, but I just couldn't see it for the bad stuff. Um, but my other favorite one was duct tape. I used that in the first when I you told me, and then I learned it, and the I could see the results within days, like. Just the, the little comments that I, I thought I was being helpful, but I was actually being disrespectful. That was huge. Um, my husband really, he, he changed almost straight away after I stopped telling him how to do everything. So but he just, yeah, he felt more respect from me, I guess. And, um, yeah, it changed our relationship. So what, how did you notice the change in him? Like what did you notice about him that had changed? Well, when I first started doing duct tape, I he changed well he would look at me like when he was doing something and he'd be like, like waiting for me to tell him sort of how to do it properly or and then he and he even said uh is this, is this how you want it done um you know like made me cry I was just like that how much I had stifled him and so with the duct tape yeah it was very quiet around the house for a few weeks because there wasn't me like I thought I was just talking but I'm you know I was being I guess it, yeah complaining and and criticizing but I thought it was helpful but um so yeah and then I guess because he didn't have me looking over his shoulder so much um he started doing things um that you know so taking initiative doing things himself that probably would have waited for me to instruct him to do it yeah like the dishes and um I think he enjoyed coming home from work now like he was just more present around the house that was how I realized that he changed. And so you got pretty quick results, it sounds like. Yeah. The duct tape. And, and then what did you, how did you apply the gratitude skill? What did you do there? Um, yep. Um, the gratitude, I, I made that, yeah, big list of uh, 22, I think it was. Um, just focusing on all the things that he was doing. That 
that was huge. I was just like, I didn't, re- I was so busy focusing on him, not doing the dishes, not doing, you know, not um, not sending me, yeah, like text messages. I, I really always wanted, like, that was one of the things whenever we would go to counselling. I really want a text message during the day or a call, you know, a phone call. Like I never used to get that and I'd have to go to counselling and the counsellor said, well, this is one of her needs. So, you know, you, 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 if you can do it, that would be great. And you'd do it for like, yeah, you'd do it for a month, not even a month, a week, I reckon it would last and then and then it would stop. So, but yeah, now I'm getting text messages and, and I always say, and I've used the, the gratitude when with the list of, uh, Thank you for sending me a text message. It really made my day, sort of thing. And yeah, he just and now he can't stop sending them. So and and calling me as well, which is I love it. <laughs> I love that too. It sounds pretty magical. Now, did you tell him that you wanted him to start sending you text messages? No, no. I think he sent me one, and but then I used the gratitude and, and thanked him for sending me the text message and, and let him know how it made me feel. And he's like, oh, okay. <laughs> So, so yeah, so you didn't even have to ask. I just remember for me, it always felt kind of crummy to have to ask for his attention like that. So it's much nicer that he just took the initiative. So what kinds of things does he say in those sweet texts? I, yeah, he's just, uh, yeah, how's my sexy work doing? And I can't wait to see you tonight and stuff like that. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay, that's huge. So there's that's intimacy right there. Mm-hmm. Start right on the text, it sounds like, during the day. Yep. Yeah. And so what about that? Uh, when he comes home, is he still kind of checked out or? No, no, he's definitely present. And one of my favorite things to do now as well is just to make sure he's present. I'll, when he does come home in the door, I'll, I'll join the dogs and I'll run up to the door and give him a big kiss. And <laughs> he loves that. So it's, uh, yeah, it brings some gospel. It sets a good tone for the rest of the night where definitely a lot more laughter around the house and and um yeah lots more intimacy wow i love that you run to the door with the dogs and give him <laughs> a big kiss when did you start doing that that was that was new it sounds like yeah that was yeah well that was when i when i was learning the skills of the gospel i was like oh how you know if you've got us a fun on my i oh how am i going to do this like i've you know i've been I've, i guess i've been negative for so long or you know looking you know focusing on negative things that there was no there wasn't no gospel. Um, I wasn't, I, I guess I wasn't happy to see my husband now. But, and then the first time I did it, it was a little bit weird. And he was like, whoa, what's going on? Um, but now if I don't do it, I'm like, whoa, are you okay? Sort of thing, like what's going on? My husband, <laughs> he comes and finds me because if, if I haven't run to the door. <laughs> oh, it's the new normal now. Yeah. yeah. It's so sweet. I love that. So, um, and then how has this impacted your kids that you guys, have all this connection now yeah no they're uh they've been they love it they my my oldest daughter now she's uh back on track she's loving school i mean she yeah and she was having trouble with friendships but now that's all sorted out they're much happier in themselves and and i definitely attribute to that to um, my husband getting you know having that marriage that loving marriage and the love that the love is spreading (laughs) Wow, they have they commented at all? They must see a big difference. Yeah, definitely, yeah, yeah. They're they're like, oh, you, you guys don't fight anymore, you know. And my and my daughters asked me, and I have mentioned that. Said, oh, yeah, I've got this great book. When you're a bit older, you might like to read it. Laura Doyle. <laughs> She's like, oh my gosh, that book is magic, Mum. Like, and they see me doing the coaching and stuff. They're like, they they like whenever I tell them, like, okay, you, you want to call? Okay, good. Hey. I appreciate it for sure. Oh, it sounds like the whole family supports your coaching. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So if you could uh, give us a tip, like someone who's listening, who's experiencing exactly what you had where it was just felt stiff and there wasn't much laughter and there was no intimacy, and she wants to create what you have now where it feels so light and the whole family feels the love, where should she start? What should she do? Definitely, um, either buy the book or jump straight into coaching as I did. But <laughs> yeah, I received coaching with with the coaching training, and yeah, the coaching was amazing, and doing the the training was even more amazing. Just being online with other women, t- telling their stories, and realizing that I'm not the only one 
having these issues, like not learning for the first time what respect looks like for a man, um, that was just eye-opening and, and life-changing. Yeah. Yeah. What, what was the difference between what you, how you see respect now and what you thought it was before? Yeah, I'm quite sure what I thought it was before. It definitely wasn't not, you know, not comment, like, yeah, not complaining. I mean, I have, I guess it was the way I complained. Like, I would have thought, no, I'm, I know because my mum would always complain or nag. Um, and I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do that. But I didn't realise, like, I was doing it, but just I was sort of hiding it in a different way. Like, I would try I thought I was wording it better but it turns out I wasn't like it it wasn't working at all yeah uh but I, as well as learning the respect for my husband I I didn't actually have respect for my I knew I didn't have respect for my husband um that's when I was like uh, that's why I was struggling to stay with him like I uh, but um learning your skills there were things that I could respect about him and then focusing on those things just it made the respect grow. Like I just like, hey, I, yeah, realized how much I was doing that was disrespectful. That's why I couldn't respect him because of what I was doing. So, yeah, yeah, it's tricky to, yeah, you think it's him and then you change yourself and realize, like, oh, wait, yeah. He, so you remembered why you chose him to begin with, it sounds like. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, Will, if you could go back and talk to Jody from before, what do you know now that you would say to her? Um, I would say, yes, yeah, keep going. It is you. I, I like I said, I think I, I realized it was me, and I, I did, but I, and I knew I had to change, and um, but I, I had no, like, I could not find anywhere telling me how to change that would change, like change beneficially to then help my husband change. So my tip to me would be just keep going, like yeah. And hopefully you'll come across the road or one day. <laughs> um, yeah, because that, that was how I learned to change my behavior. Yeah. And what about the changes in Jody? Like, how would you describe how, how you're different now? Yeah, well, I'm much more vulnerable. Like, um, you know, shut people out, including my husband. So being vulnerable has been, um, yeah, another life changing moment in that I'm, I'm, my, Friendships are, have improved. Um, my relationships with my kids have improved. Yeah, my whole life, pretty much. Wow. Yeah. So this, you've done a lot of work already, it sounds like, and maybe this made it just all come together for you. Yeah, yeah. 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 Learning those different, like, the skills of, like, just looking at things differently. Yeah, I mean, I've heard gratitude before, but it didn't, I don't know, it just didn't sink in. I think with the, the coach training really helped to focus that head light and doing it each week and realising uh, the changes that I uh, got from it and really, you know, jumping on them and, and focusing on the good stuff and how much it did expand. I don't know what it was, but just something in your course just made it stick and, and work. So, Well, I you. think it's great. I think it's extraordinary... What you've done, Jody, you took a marriage that uh, sounds like it was mostly a struggle for 10 years. Mm. And there was uh, talk of divorce and separation, lots of trips to the marriage counselor, and not much laughter. And you created um, you created a strong marriage and a happy home. Yeah. And I just think the world needs more women like you who make their relationships a priority. Yeah. It's very inspiring. Thank you. All my inspiration comes from you, Laura. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And thanks for coming on and sharing so openly with us. It's uh, so valuable. My pleasure. If you're wondering how to get started with fixing your relationship and making it shiny again, then you need a roadmap. Get six simple steps to follow that will set your relationship up for success. Discover three common mistakes that wives make trying to fix their relationship that just make things worse. When you download my free Adored Wife Roadmap, you can do that at GetCherished.com. Go to GetCherished.com now to get your roadmap in minutes. And now it's time for the Worst Relationship Advice of the Week Award. It's the Worst Relationship Advice of the Worst Relationship Advice. Yeah, it's the Worst Relationship Advice 
The advice that's revolting me this week is there shouldn't be any secrets between you. I remember thinking that too. I thought that being in love meant we should tell each other everything about everything. I imagine that would make me feel less afraid about being abandoned, which was my greatest fear. I thought it would give me reassurance and peace of mind to have no secrets between my husband and me. I also believed it would help us achieve the highest level of intimacy and connection if we were both completely open and honest. But wow, do I ever see things differently now? For one thing, I notice that not every thought that flies through my head is worth sharing, even if it feels like the truth. That doesn't mean that it is the truth. It doesn't mean that sharing it would have more benefit than it would cost me. But I used to think that not sharing what I was thinking was the same as keeping secrets. In other words, I was an oversharer, which is not such a good quality. Keeping my opinion to myself is a virtue, and I hadn't cultivated that when I was a newlywed. And that caused a lot of needless fights and hurt feelings. The truth is, taking all my thoughts into considerations, I am not a nice person. Not if you heard everything I thought. You wouldn't think so either. Maybe you can relate. That's why I now see keeping some of my thoughts to myself, keeping them a secret as wisdom. Think of it as gentleness. It took some discipline, some practice for me to gain the ability to pause first, to decide if my thoughts were worthy of sharing or if they should just stay a secret forever to avoid hurting my husband. But you might be thinking, but Laura, I don't want him to have any secrets. You might be thinking that having secrets is not about being polite or withholding unkind words. You might think that not having secrets will protect you from suffering a a betrayal, for example, or maybe it would help you prevent it before it happens. But I see a direct connection between the practice of choosing carefully which thoughts I decide to share and preventing a betrayal. Purposely not sharing my impolite secrets That has created emotional safety in my marriage. It's so much so that my husband feels pretty safe to share many things with me that he didn't used to tell me. I think he also feels safe to have his own private thoughts without fear that I'll try to pry them out of him the way I used to. And that trust has created the intimacy and connection that I thought I would get from having no secrets. For that reason, the advice that there shouldn't be any secrets between you is the very worst relationship advice I've heard all week. Listen and subscribe to the Empowered Wife podcast. Next week, we'll talk about what to do with your monster-in-law, if you have one. In the meantime, I hope you're having lots of fun. Today's fun fact is that our kitchen countertops sure camouflage the mess. I'll be wiping them down after dinner, and I'll find something I couldn't even see, like a peanut butter sandwich or a side of bacon. (laughs) 